move on to our next session before the exhibition break, which is unlocking the alumni success through technology. Taking the stage is Mrs. Nancy Das, who is the Vice President at Uni Variety. It's quite humbling being in this room of such eminent educationists today. Um, and many of you here have set up schools, set up curriculums in so many different ways and doing so well. A school, as you all would know, is more than just a classroom uh, or books. Uh, a school is made up of experiences um, that the students are able to get in the school. Now, as educators, many of you uh, recruit teachers from different uh, cultures, from different countries, uh, from different cities, uh, in a bid to bring about a global perspective to our students, right? Um, and that experience, of course, is extremely important. Another key way in order to bring a global perspective and a rich experience to our students is through these seeds that you all sow when kids are in kindergarten. And when they graduate, they go away. And with them, go away the experiences that your upcoming students can get. I'm talking about your alumni, your wealth that you invest in all the way since they're in kindergarten until they pass out. They, they, they go through a set of experiences themselves for the 13 or to 15 years that they're in the school and that experience is rich. And there are ways in which we can use technology to be able to bring those experiences back into the classroom and help our current students who are in school. I'm going to be talking about a few case studies here. Um, and these are real case studies from schools that we've worked with. Um, and the experiences that these students have had um, and how they can contribute back uh, to the students in the school. Uh, this is one example of Ishan. Uh, Ishan is a student from a CBSC school in a tier two city. Uh, Ishan was a 96% scorer uh, and he wanted to join IIT. Um, he didn't crack the JE exam in the first attempt and like many others and with peer influence, uh, he decided to drop a year. Also because he did not uh, have any other backup colleges that he applied to, like most kids. You know, when you're determined that you want to do an IIT, you want to do an IIT. And then there's nothing else that you want to really prepare for. Um, little did Ishan know that uh, only 3% of students that appear for uh, the JE the second time around really crack it. Which means 97% students do not crack it the second time as well. Thankfully, the second time around, uh, Ishan did apply to other Indian colleges uh, as backup. He did not make it to IIT the second time around either, uh, but he's happily studying in VIT now. Um, imagine if Ishan could connect with a senior and understand this beforehand. He would not have dropped a year. The decision he made after dropping a year of having other backup Indian colleges to apply for is a decision he could have taken the first time around. Um, imagine if Ishan was able to connect to a senior and get answers to questions like this. Why did you drop a year even after having a 96%? How would you cope with social pressure? If, or, you know, or, or if I were a student, I could ask my senior, how would I cope with pressure, uh, social pressure of dropping a year? There is a lot of that. Um, do I need to apply to any other Indian colleges? Another example of a case study is, a, is, is of a student called Pallavi. Pallavi is uh, a student from another uh, CBSE school, but in a metro city now. Pallavi made it to University of Denver in the US with a scholarship of $132,000. And Pallavi still dropped a year. And she did not join the college. Any guesses why would a student not join a college after getting a scholarship? She'd be looking for Ivy League, okay. 
sorry because no education is free even though you get a scholarship there are still hidden costs so on top of the scholarship her parents still had to pay another 15 lakhs and that's something that did not foresee um these uh, uh such information you get with experience or you get when you speak to somebody who comes with that experience and i am referring to alumni now imagine if pallavi would have gotten an opportunity to speak to an alumni who's gone through this drill who would be able to tell her that you know even though you're getting a scholarship you do know that there's no education that's free there's still an amount that you will have to pay your tuition fee might be you know you might get a scholarship on your tuition fee but what about everything else um pallavi now being a senior or an alumni or uh, is in a position to answer questions like why did she drop a year even after such a large scholarship did the parents support the decision did she get more offers from other us universities and did she apply to other indian colleges too another example is that of daksha daksha is a student from a top ib school uh, in a metro city actually mumbai um daksha got six admission offers from international universities she joined the university of south australia on a scholarship and daksha when she joined the university she took both law and psychology as a subjects now it's a pretty tedious task taking up two majors in an in an undergrad uh, uh setting um and you would typically imagine that somebody who takes up two majors like law and psychology would possibly not have a social life uh would possibly be only academically driven but you know what this case study ta taught us is that that's not true um she took up psychology because she wanted as a person she wanted to help others she took up law because she thought it's important to know law and that's a good thing to know all her life um and she wanted to find out how she can integrate her hobby which is dance so she she was a dancer and da dancing was a hobby she wanted to know how could she integrate her hobby into her career within her career as well typically what happens is you know we all have hobbies as children in school and then when we go into college we're so academically driven that we drop our hobbies and i'm a ex classic example of that too uh how can we make our students convert their hobbies into achievements and still pursue them all their life so what daksha did was she studied psychology uh so that she could use her hobby in her professional life uh and she started learning dance therapy uh while she was studying psychology so she was studying law she was studying psychology she was practicing dance therapy and she said that she had a thriving social life now look at the kind of questions daksha can answer to her juniors now why did you choose psychology and law as your majors how did you convert your hobbies into your achievements while studying dual subjects what factors did you consider before choosing universities in australia um all this is absolutely possible um uh using technology we have thousands of students that have passed out in the pa in, in the past from each of our schools um that's an army of mentors imagine if that army of mentors and guide can be brought together under one roof digitally using technology look at the number of guides you would have to yourself i i heard uh you know um uh, a ma'am here from wells international school talking about how can we make it free how can we make it cost effective this is how you can absolutely make it cost effective you know you have your own mentors in house yes ma'am okay you have your own mentors in house your these are your career counselors that you have grown they've had good experiences and they've had bad experiences they've dropped a year and they're learning from that and they've got scholarships and joined top universities and they're learning from that now tools like such can actually help you bring all your alumni digitally under one roof together help you search for your alumni by country city course college curriculum pass out your top colleges scholarships alumni who are offering internships for example sure. um 
and then also be able to study the alumni's journey. What kind of scholarships did the alumni get? What were the grades the alumni had? What colleges did the alumni get offers from? Where did the alumni join? So if my alumni got offers from three colleges, it means that alumni can guide me on three colleges, not just the one that they joined. Um, being able to view videos of alumni. Also, you know, alumni that are located globally, how can you bring them back to your school? They can't come back to the school to do a session with their juniors, right? So how do we connect Excuse with them? Nancy. Technology, do web sessions. And you Excuse have alumni, Nancy. and alumni sitting in the US, being able to do a web. Uh, you'll have to wind it up in 30 seconds. Sure, thanks. Alumni sitting in the US being able to do a web session with students uh, in India. And that's the power of technology. Students get guidance on different topics. And I would finally like to conclude with the depth of the alumni exper experiences as perhaps the missing link towards helping children taking informed decisions. Uh, these are hidden stories. Um, many of us know them. We just decide not to celebrate them. We sweep them under the carpet. Uh, we only celebrate the ones that we know have done well. Um, these stories are going to be learning experiences for the next year. Um, the same mistakes can be avoided. Uh, let's not let them be hidden stories of every batch. Let them just be the hidden stories of the last batch that you had. Connect with your alumni. They are your wealth. They're the people that you've invested in. Bring them back to life. Engage with them. And they will do miracles for you. Thank you so much.